Hi, this is Phil Carlton. I got a question about saving and exporting and the differences and kind of what they do. So I want to talk first about our file formats. So in my hoop right now I have several different elements. I'm going to use the tab key on my keyboard to move through each of the elements. The first thing I have is this outside frame. So this is one of the frames that's built into my software. Notice it's got green handles. The green handles tell me it's something that was created inside the software. So if I make changes to it, it will recreate it or redigitize it. The next thing I have is a couple of pieces of lettering and then this little new super design that was added in 12.4. Now all of these objects have green handles. So they're objects that came from the software and that's going to be really important in a moment. Before we go any further, let me just talk about saving. So I'm going to go under my file menu and I'm going to go down to save. Now I could use file save or file save as. Right now I'm just going to use save. If you'll notice up at the top, my file is currently untitled. It doesn't have a save. So regardless of which one I choose, it's going to bring up a dialog box where I can name the file. So I have a folder here called save and export and I'm going to call this grad daniel. And notice it is saving this as a VP4. VP4 was a format that was added back in Premiere Plus. And what's cool about VP4 is it retains all of that smart information. So all the lettering information, all the super design. When I open this file back up, they will still have green handles and I'll be able to make changes to those objects later on. I'm going to save that and then I'm going to come up and click a select all just for a moment just to show you that right now I have 10 different colors. I have, I've used the same reds a couple of times in the borders and in the lettering. I've used the same gold in the lettering and in the little grad super design. So I'm now going to go file export and when I export it's going to let me create kind of the most streamlined version of this file. Now the first thing you do when you go to export is you tell it what file format you want to use and I'm going to go to VP3. Now I could save to a VP4. I do have the new top of the line machine will open up a VP4 but I like to export as a VP3 for a couple of reasons. The main reason is I have machines that will not read the VP4 so by exporting to that VP3 I'll be able to use it on any of my embroidery machines. The other nice thing is I've saved that VP4 which is kind of that working file that I can make changes to and if I look at my file list later and I see the VP4 and then I see my exported VP3 I'll know that exported one is the one that is the most streamlined kind of cleanest file ready for me to embroider. Now when I export there are four options up here at the top I want to talk about. First one is combine. So I have a couple of different text elements. I've got the border. I've got the little graduate. Do I want to turn these all into one object when I get to my machine? Yes, I do. So I'm going to want to combine them. Remove overlap. If I had a fill area on top of another fill area, it would remove the stitches behind there. Color sort says if you've got red, say, in your frame and in your lettering, or the gold and the lettering and the graduate, do you want to stitch them together or do you want the machine to stop for each one? It will only color sort if it can color sort without changing the integrity of the design. I'm going to want to leave that checked. And optimize stitch length, real simply, it just looks for tiny stitches that are like a little less than a millimeter long. By default, I think it's 0.8 millimeters. And if it sees those tiny little stitches that are like a 50th of an inch, it's just going to hook them on to the previous stitch. It won't ever be anything that you see in your final stitch out, but it may remove a lot of extra stitches, so it's a nice option to keep checked. I'm going to click OK now. So I've selected my VP3. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to browse to my save and export folder, and I'm going to call this grad Daniel, and by default it added the word exported to the end of it, and it's going to save this or export it as that VP3. This is going to be my nice final stitch out version. I'm going to click export and now I'm going to go file new to bring up a new blank document. And I want to insert these two different files or open them up so you can kind of see the difference. So if I go file open and I open up first of all my VP4, when I click open it's going to come in. It has these little orange handles around the outside in dotted lines. That means it's multiple objects they're temporarily held together, but if I use my tab key again, I can now move through all these different objects and make changes. So for example, for this one I want to right click and go into my properties, and maybe instead of Daniel, I wanted this to be Michael. So now when I click OK, 
I was able to easily update that lettering without having to remember what font, what size. I could just right click and make the changes. And that's the power of those green handles. I'm going to go File New now. I'm not, and actually, let me cancel that. So I changed my name. Let's go ahead and talk about Save As. Right now, notice up at the top, this is still my grad Daniel file because I opened it up and I made changes. So if I hit Save, it's going to save Michael on top of that file. So if I go File, Save As, then I can rename it. So Save As will always give me the option to type in a new name. It's very nice for saving several versions. If you're working through a project, so you can go back to a previous version. Or just have the option to go back without half. If I needed Daniel's file again, then I wouldn't have rewritten on top of it. So I'll save that. And then, of course, if I wanted to stitch this out, I would go and I would export that one. But I'm not going to do that for this example. I'm going to go File, New. Now I'm going to open up the grad Daniel, the exported version that I created. And remember, I had, I think I had 10 colors. Now this is down to only six colors. So everywhere that it saw the reds that it could put together, it put the reds together, it puts the yellows together. Notice also it combined everything. So I have these white handles telling me this is just an embroidery design. There isn't anything smart about these objects. I can't make changes. It's just one big embroidery design. That's going to be fantastic when I get to my machine because I want a nice streamlined file. But I wouldn't have the ability to edit that. So that's why I say the VP4 is my working file. Then I export the VP3 for my final file. I want to show you one other example. So I've inserted an applique design, and this applique design is a little exaggerated, but I want you to kind of understand what's happening here. I have three different applique areas, one for the red, one for the green, and one for the blue. And notice over in my color list, for each of those appliques, I have three colors. So this is digitized with a placement stitch, a tack down stitch, and then the satin line in each of those different colors. Now, it's really nice here because we can see the difference, but if I go File Export right now, it would color sort and put all the reds and all the greens and all the blues together, and I would lose those placement and tack down lines. This can happen if you've purchased an embroidery or an applique design, and the digitizer has used the same color for multiple functions. One way you can tell what's going to happen, and kind of a shortcut, is I want to talk about the Life Viewer, the design player, for a second. Because in my color list right now, I see 11 colors. But if I open up my design player, which would let me preview how this is going to stitch, I only see four colors. That tells me that it has color sorted those different colors together. So what happens when we do a Life View, or we use the Design Player, or if we print a template, is it looks at our defaults. So I'm going to go into Premiere Plus 2 Configure, and I want to go to the Export tab. And notice on my Export tab, I have Combine, Remove Overlap, Color Sort, and Optimize Stitch Length checked. That means that when I look at the Design Player, it's saying, oh, you want to see what's going to happen when you export this design? I'm going to combine, I'm going to color sort, I'm going to do all of that cleaning. So that's why I'm only seeing the four colors when I get to Design Player. I would also only see the four colors when I got to my machine, and it wouldn't stop for my applique pieces. I'm going to uncheck, just to demonstrate here, my color sort, and click OK. Now when I go into my Design Player, I'm seeing those 11 different colors. So understanding how the export settings and configure affect your exporting is going to help make sure that you know what happens when you get to your machine. Now if I go, I'm going to cancel that and go File, Export. Now I do have the option here to check or uncheck color sort. So if I'm using that export function, I can make sure that I only color sort when I want to. But if you're sending directly to your machine, so if I'm using the MySonet to send, MySonet also looks at those export settings. So if I send this to MySonet right now, it is going to say, okay, you want to send this design to your machine? Well, it's going to look over at export and it's going to say, oh, you don't have color sort checked, so I won't color sort these together. If I had color sort checked, clicked OK, now if I sent it to my Sonet, it would give me that color sorted file so my placement and tack down and stitches would all be put together. The best way to find out what's going to happen when you send a Sonet is what we've been looking at here. Either do a life view or a design player and that preview right there is going to show you exactly what happens if you send to your machine. I hope this has helped you. Thank you very much.